I'm back and today we're talking once again about the Zeptec Go EV charger. I reviewed this in February 2022 so now it's about 18-20 months uh, later and many people are still watching that video and asking me how is it now? How is it after about two years? So let's find out. Let's all turn on the tube. This is hot dog soup. Okay, first of all, I'm a software developer and a, te a tech guy, so I'm not a review channel. I just accidentally reviewed the Zeptec Go EV charger because I bought it and I thought, well, let's make a video about it. And it has been a very successful video and people are still commenting today, tell me more about this charger. Is it still okay? Does it still work? Are there any issues with it? Has the software been improved? Etc, etc. So I promised a couple of people in the comments to make another video about it. What's it like after almost two years of use? First, the hardware. Of course, it's basically just a piece of plastic that hangs on the wall. And it's been hanging there for almost two years now, in sunshine, rain, storms, snow even, but still nothing happened to it. It's basically exactly the same as it was when I bought it. Apart from the bird poo and the spider webs. I would have expected the little charging door to possibly break off because it's sort of flimsy, but it's still perfectly fine and there's nothing wrong with it. I sometimes accidentally hit it with a pressure washer while washing the car or while washing my windows and it still held up fine and there were no problems. As far as the hardware is concerned, it always works. Just plug it into your car, scan the RFID tag and it works. It always works, it has never failed to me. And I'm telling you this because on public charging stations sometimes there are errors and mistakes and it stops charging for some unknown reason. But the Zeptec Go has never failed on me once. It always works. Even if it doesn't have an internet connection, even if you don't want to use the app, it still works perfectly fine. <laughs> Zeptec has of course updated the firmware of the device a couple of times. You can see in the app that the firmware update is available and that it's installing. And I'm always slightly terrified when devices like that are being updated because I'm so afraid that it will reboot, get stuck and never work again. But this has never happened. Updates are always successful the first time. It's really quick, it's just a couple of minutes and then it's back online. One thing I've tried to do is dynamic load balancing. If my house uses a lot of electricity, I want the Zeptec Go to stop charging or to charge slower. But that is a subject that I'm struggling with. I basically still don't really know how to do load balancing with this thing. Zeptec do have a product called Zeptec Sense, but that's not available in my country. Well, it is available, but it is not compatible with my electric meter. I have a P1 connector and Zeptec doesn't support that yet. So Zeptec Sense is really a product that I cannot use. Most shops in the Netherlands, where I live, advise to use the Tibber Pulse. It's a small device that you can connect to your electric meter and it can do load balancing with the Zeptec Go. So I ordered one and I gave it a try. And I'm sorry to say, it's just horrific. It's a horrific user experience. The Tibber Pulse device is okay, it's a great device, it works, it sends data, etc, etc. But the app, the app is horrific. The app is terrible, the app is basically unusable. It has so many bugs and errors, it looks terrible, it's horrible and I don't trust it. I don't trust the Tibber app. Maybe I'll make a separate video about it, but load balancing with the Tibber Pulse and the Tibber app is not an option if you use the Zeptec Go. And Zeptec, if you really want people to do load balancing, please make it available in all countries. And don't make your customers rely on this disgusting Tibber app. Okay, that's the hardware. How about the software? Well, basically you can use the Zeptec Go without any software at all. You don't even have to connect the Zeptec Go to the internet. The only thing you cannot do without the app is lock and unlock the cable. And that is such a miss. That is such a miss. Zeptec, please make it so that you can lock and unlock the cable with the RFID tag. Please implement that feature. I already asked for it two years ago. But apart from that, Zeptec has a great app, which is not only beautiful, but also very useful. The Zeptec app is the best EV charging app I've ever seen. Most EV chargers come with some sort of crap app, apps that don't work, apps that stutter, apps that crash. It's just horrific. It's basically like the Tibber Pulse app. 
I'm very happy, and I think Zeptac should also be very proud, that their app is actually good. But of course, it also has some points that should be improved. I'll tell you about that later. But before I talk about the app, let's talk about the portal first. Well, there's not much to say because I don't use the portal at all. A couple of years ago, you had to do certain things inside of the portal all the time, especially exporting your charging history. But now that feature has been added to the app. So basically you don't ever have to use the portal again, unless you're a manager or an installer who manages a site of multiple chargers. Then maybe you can do things with the portal that you can do in the app. As a normal consumer, I guess you never need to use the portal again. And that is wonderful progress. Now, the mobile app. It has been greatly updated and improved. There, I think there's an update about every month or two months. Zeptec are really working on it and it shows. The app has a nice design and even the little tiny user interface glitches have been solved. On the dashboard you can do the most basic things, such as unlocking the cable, and you can also manage access to the charger and some small configuration details. In the access screen with a single button you can restrict access to your charger and you can allow specific people to use your charger. New in the app is an eco mode which makes you save even more money on electricity. I haven't used it, so unfortunately I cannot tell you more. Another new feature is the charging report. You can now view and export all of your charging data based on filters that you can set. The Excel export is very useful for instance if you have a company and want to process the data further. So overall the app has been greatly improved and it has a lot of new features. The initial setup and installation of a new device, I couldn't test that of course because my charger is already installed. But people in the comments have pointed out to me that the installation process of a new Zeptac Go charger is much easier now and doesn't have the errors that it used to have a couple of years ago. There still are a couple of glitches in the app that really annoy me. The most annoying glitch is that I have to sign in all the time. Every couple of days I have to sign in again. And that's really annoying because the email address field doesn't have autocomplete. It's really annoying and it's a bug that needs to be fixed. Another thing in the app that doesn't work for me is pause and resume. You can pause and resume charging, but to me it pauses, but it never resumes. I'm guessing it's because I have an older electric vehicle. It's a Kia from 2015, and I'm guessing my car doesn't support resuming, but I think the app should then detect that and not offer me the option at all. Maybe it works for other cars, but it doesn't work for me. The final thing about the app that I really don't like is about privacy. Zeptec are now using Firebase Analytics in the app, whereas the earlier versions of the app didn't have that. Firebase is owned by Google, and I don't like apps that send stuff to Google. I really don't like it. The app also doesn't tell you, and the app doesn't show any form of consent dialogue. And I think that is not a good thing. People should be able to opt out of Firebase Analytics. So Zeptec, please fix that. Despite these things, the Zeptec Go app is a really good app. And like I said, it really works well, it has been improved a lot, and it's basically the best EV charger app I've ever seen. And I stand by it, even though Zeptec fucked up the privacy. So overall, after about two years, the device is still working, never had any issues, never had any errors, the app has been greatly improved, and I think it's really worth the eight or 900 euros that it costs. It's a great product, and I'd like to think of Zeptec being the apple of EV chargers. It really is a great product overall, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone looking for an EV charger. I'm not sponsored by Zeptec, I purchased this product myself, and I'm just basically happy with it. That's my message for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm not a review channel, I'm not an electric vehicle channel, but maybe you would like to subscribe. Oh, that reminds me, I made another video about EVs. The one thing you must know before you buy a used EV. I'll link to it in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.